Hello, I am Zarkoon and this is World of Warships Legends. Now, when I was deciding which ship I wanted to take out into the tier 5 season of 1v1 ranked, I spent a little bit of time scrolling through my port, evaluating all of my choices before inspiration ultimately struck and I selected the tier 5 German heavy cruiser Graf Spee and took it out into battle with Azerlane Graf Spee at the helm. And I had a wild amount of success. In fact, I only lost one game. In this game mode, the Graf Spee is more or less unstoppable. I don't really like it so much in standard battles. Uh, there's a lot more to deal with in those. And while the Graf Spee is a very unique, heavily armored and heavily armed cruiser, it can't really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with battleships directly. It just doesn't have the armor for it. But it is excellent at demolishing cruisers. And since it is a cruiser itself, although historically the ship was called a pocket battleship, I believe it was designed because the Germans were constrained by certain provisions of a certain naval treaty that prevented them from building uh, certain battleships, and they wanted something that could do commerce raiding, so they came up with the Graf Spee class of ships. And as a result, these ships, which are, I suppose you could say heavy cruisers, they're very fast heavy cruisers, but they're somewhere between cruiser and battleship, given that they have battleship-sized guns. These are the same sized guns as those found on the Tier Six German battleship Scharnhorst. So, they sit in a strange place at Tier 5, or this ship, rather, sits in a strange place at Tier 5. I don't think it's particularly great in the standard battles, as I said, but in scenarios like this, where you can ensure that you're fighting other cruisers, well, just ask that London how that felt. He spent the rest of the game sort of running away from me, because ultimately, there's really nothing he can do. And then he got caught, and then he got sunk. And that was the story of many an enemy cruiser in my playthrough of this Tier 5 1v1 ranked season. That there was my very first game, in fact. Here we see another sort of flavor of game that I came across. Again, we're facing a cruiser. This time, the Tier 5 American Light Cruiser Dallas played by Sledge Swede, who I believe is a watcher of this channel. I notice his comments in the comments section from time to time. And unlike the London before him, he has no compunction about trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. But of course, I have torpedoes and he does not. And even though he is a relatively high DPM cruiser with fast-firing guns and pretty good HE, not to mention very good AP, there's just no way, even with his DPM, that he can hope to kill me fast enough unless I just sort of sit still flat broadside in front of him and allow him to shoot AP into me at point blank range, which of course I'm not going to do. Instead, I'm going to close the distance on him and I'm just going to continue shooting until I can get close enough to where maybe I can get my torpedoes to connect with his hull. Notice there, by the way, that I believe I'm overmatching his bow armor with the Graf Spee's guns. These guns are big enough to overmatch the armor of many Tier 5 cruisers, which is another reason why it is such a good pick for this ranked season. Honestly, it feels unfair when you take it out and you get into situations like this. What was poor Sledge Swede here supposed to do? I mean, honestly, aside from ram me, and I don't think that exactly would have won him the game. In fact, are we going to get the close quarters expert on him? Nah, we're just going to take him out with our guns and finish the game. Probably end his suffering there. I apologize, good sir. But basically, those are the two sorts of games I mostly had versus cruisers. But this 1v1 ranked format does allow you to be matched up against ships of a different class, including destroyers and battleships. So here we see an enemy destroyer, the Mahan, 
And the Graf Spee in situations like this, 1v1 versus a destroyer, similarly unstoppable. It's got the excellent German sonar with an incredible ship spotting range that I think is over 5 kilometers and maybe even approaches 6 kilometers. It might not be quite that good, but you can certainly see destroyers from far away. It's also got secondaries. You could never accuse them of being accurate. But if you're close enough, sometimes they will hit the destroyer, and if they do, they'll probably deal some damage. They might even start a fire or things like that. And, you know, if the destroyer wants to post in front of you, sitting inside of his smoke screen, you can simply turn on your sonar, keep him spotted. He really can't see you through the smoke screen unless you shoot your gun, so you can let your secondaries do the talking. And, as the old adage always goes, smoke screens are torpedo magnets, something this mayhem will surely remember after that. Then, uh, of course, what happens when you take out the Graf Spee and you find yourself facing another Graf Spee? Well, remember how I said earlier in this video two different things. Number one, that the Graf Spee is a heavily armored cruiser, but it's not all that heavily armored. It can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with battleships, and it can certainly take chunks out of itself with its own armor-piercing guns, especially if it gives broadside to itself there. Let's see what this salvo does to this guy. Actually, he's turning in, so he was able to mitigate that damage. Good for him. But anyway, you do want to be firing the armor-piercing with the Graf Spee against other cruisers or, for the most part, probably battleships. You don't really want to be firing HE, and you're going to notice that this enemy Graf Spee is going to fire HE at me for every single salvo he launches during this game. He's also going to be launching torpedoes at me, but again, we have the sonar, so we're able to turn that on to give ourselves advanced warning. Another great thing about the Graf Spee in this ranked season, by the way, is that you can get it with three repair parties, and very few other cruisers at Tier 5 actually have repair parties. The only two that readily come to mind are the two British cruisers, the light one and the heavy one, which would be the Leander and the... What's the heavy British cruiser's name? Its name escapes me. I suppose the London also has a repair party too, at least I think it does, although that's the premium tier 5 British heavy cruiser, the Devonshire, that's it, that's the tech tree British heavy cruiser. F in the comments section for my inability to remember that, and F in the comments section for this Graf Spee, who, honestly, he must be a newer, not very experienced player in competitive settings, a uh, top tip for you is just don't give broadside to ships that can smack your citadel with their armor piercing. It will end in disaster. And now this poor Graf Spee has turned in. We've taken out one of his guns. We're going to try to put this island between ourselves and him. The sonar is about to run out, but that's okay. If we can get the Graf Spee to push into us, then it means he's going to have a much harder time launching any torpedoes at us, which means we won't have to worry about them so much. And if he comes around this corner broadside, well, he's probably dead. There's a 5k chunk. He is turning away desperately. Certainly, he's launched his torpedoes. They should be coming any second. So we're going to make a course shift here, I think, any moment. Going to send torpedoes out ourselves. Maybe we're not going to make a course shift. We're not even really worried about his torpedoes at all. He's turning broadside again. Is that the kill? No. This guy is a little bit elusive, but you get the gist. If you're going to take out the Graf Spee, you should almost treat it like a battleship in a sense. AP is going to almost always be your best friend in fights against literally any other cruiser you're likely to face in this 1v1 Tier 5 ranked season, including the Graf Spee itself. And don't worry, we'll have a rematch with the Graf Spee in a moment, and I'll show you the only game that I lost this season. 
Now, it's, all, it's a stroke of luck, I suppose, that when I came across this California, he went AFK, because I do think he could have given me a run for his money, and I'm really not sure what happened with this guy. I assume he lost connection because, well, I, he certainly didn't quit intentionally, right? He had every advantage against a Graf Spee, but AFK, stationary, the Graf Spee has a lot of firepower. There's an illustration of just what its guns and its torpedoes can do. So if you do find yourself in a battle against a battleship who is not AFK, this ship could definitely win against it. It's just going to have to rely on its maneuverability and using island cover and the like to shield itself from taking too much direct fire from battleship guns, which it can't really stand up to. But now, here we have the only game I actually lost in this entire run of the Tier 5 1v1 ranked, and it is against an enemy Graf Spee, played by a longtime watcher of this channel, Dion Classic, who, if memory serves me right, won a premium ship from me during a giveaway stream. I want to say he selected the hood, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments, Dion Classic, if my memory is in fact correct. He's going to give me a run for my money here, no doubt about it. This was by far the most competitive game I played in this entire season of the 1v1 ranked. And this is sort of the highlight of this video, because even though I do end up losing, I think this is a good game against or versus featuring two good players playing well against each other. Dion Classic here has popped the sonar, so he's able to spot me. I counter sonar him in return. And right now we're just sort of playing the island game. A lot of this is about trying to outmaneuver each other, honestly, and get each other into a position where one of you has the advantage, essentially. He gets a nice hit on us over there from above, or over the island, rather. Nice little 5k chunk. Again, the armor on the Graf Spee. It's not all that robust. It's fine against cruiser caliber guns from either light or heavy cruisers, but once you start getting into battleship-sized guns, and again, the guns on the Graf Bay are battleship-sized guns, well, it can get chunked pretty easily from armor piercing from those kind of guns. Still, we have managed to trade pretty well with Dion Classic out there. We've taken away 11,000 of his hit points, and he's taken away roughly 9,000 of ours thanks to the heal. Although we can assume he's probably healed up some too. He's coming out again for another engagement. Careful to angle his ship there. We're trying to anticipate what he may or may not do as he pushes in and we launch the torpedoes out there. But we're not really using the torpedoes as our primary weapon. That is the guns. And we're aiming for his bow because... I feel like I can overmatch the bow of the Graf Spee. I may be incorrect on this. I do, or I probably should have looked at the armor viewer before I started talking about this. But now that he's giving us broadside, we still have our sonar running. We can see those torpedoes. We should be able to dodge them well. And remember how I talked about trying to outmaneuver your opponent. That is essentially what it comes down to in Graf Spee versus Graf Spee fights like this when the combatants are both engaged and actually trying to do their best to win. So we've been able to dodge his torpedoes. We're not going to dodge this second set. He is going to catch us on the nose. And ultimately, I think this might contribute heavily to our downfall here. You see, we've popped the heel, but now Dion Classic is compromised. He's beached himself on an island. He has no maneuverability. He's expended his torpedoes. So we have every advantage coming into this last sequence here, aside from the fact that we don't have a lot of hit points left, and we really want to finish him off. So we're going to try to get our torpedoes on target, but they just aren't quite reloaded. We take a shot from one of his guns, and he's going to have the second one on target. He manages to kill us at pretty much exactly the same time as we kill him. And I don't know exactly how it happens, but that results in a defeat for us, and that was the only defeat I had 
again in this entire season. So GG, Dion Classic, that was, as you said, a hell of a finish. Anyway, after that, it was all smooth sailing, just a few more cruisers, maybe a couple more destroyers to deal with, and to be honest, they didn't really put up that much of a fight. I got to use some torpedoes uh, quite a few times, once against this Trento, and once again against this Nuremberg, who was playing a game of chicken with me, but a game of chicken with sonar in the mix, and of course, I can see his torpedoes before they're any danger, so I bait them around the corner of this island. He misses, and now I think he, like poor Dion Classic before him, no, he hasn't beached himself. He is moving forward, trying to get the torpedoes off on the other side. Pretty good move, but not quick enough on the draw. And finally, this last little clip here, I just thought this was kind of funny. Uh, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, there's really no reason to take out Japanese torpedo boats in 1v1 ranked games. They are not good 1v1 against anything, <laughs> except maybe a battleship. And there's the close quarters expert to end off the video. Finish the ranked season with 17 battles played, 94% win rate because of that loss against Eon Classic. And frankly, it was a fun time. If you're looking for a ship to take out this season, I highly recommend the Grash Bay. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.